Hi folks, we are now about halfway through our Epic Warpath Kickstarter, so I thought this was a fantastic time to catch up with Ronnie and Matt and have a little chat about, about where we are so far and also to answer some of the kind of burning questions that's been cropping up a little bit throughout the Kickstarter. So, Ronnie, how do you think it's been going? Great start. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it came out the blocks flying. Everyone knows we were concerned that... There was going to be room in the market and we yeah. couldn't afford to go there without the plastics. We, we asked for that and it was covered in 17 minutes and boy, oh boy. Fifth faction already unlocked. So that whole, oh my goodness, do people want to play with interesting different factions, different yeah. play style, clean, slick rules. Yeah, yeah, categorically big, big tick. Yeah, definitely. And it's it, I, I, I guess it's, it's worth saying as well, this is really is an old school Kickstarter. It's not the kind of the glorified pre-order maybe that some people have kind of been getting used to. Um, it's about bringing people on the journey with us. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we might talk about this a bit more, but when we're doing Worms, for example, it is a board game. We've designed it. The sculpts are coming. They were daily reveals. It was nice, it was good fun, but you're staying within the tram lines. You've got an IP, yeah. you've got um, the game mechanics. This is, we go as far as everybody wants us to go, you know, and it, we don't have every single thing designed, everything done. We, Matt and the, the whole team here are, we've taken the first four, well, now already five, yeah. and we're showing pictures off. We're showing what we're working on. We're going to be delivering with it. We know the plastics, we can show you the quality, da, da, da. but this is come get involved, be part of this process. It's a bit like Dead Zone 1 yeah. when we were at the cutting edge of it. I think the rules are not much slicker. With Dead Zone 1, we were still writing the rules. We aren't writing those. I think that's why we've talked about Matt and Alessio a lot. Owning the rule set, you can play it, you can feel it, that's done, it's locked down, you know you're getting a guaranteed gameplay experience. But in terms of the armies, yeah. you know, I think that's... Yeah, yeah, they're, still, they're, they're, they're all still being being developed. So, you know, that's that's the stage we're at now. Plato's to core mechanics done, yeah. absolutely nailed in. Um, yeah, it's now it's now the armies, which is where everyone can get involved. So, yeah, just, just to kind of pick up on some of the questions that's been raised, one of the things that's cropped up a few times in, in different different kind of guises has been around the scale of the game. So do you want to touch on, on the scale? Yeah, so what we did was we didn't pick any particular scale, you know, so everyone's been asking what, what scale what scale have you picked and why did we go there? Um, so we didn't go, it's going to be 15 mil. What we did was we, we printed off some enforcers at various, various sizes um, and kind of all sat down and said, okay, well, look, that's that that one there. Yeah. That one's the the, the nice that size. Works. It works. It's got the nice detail. It'd be feels nice to paint right. yeah. uh, and, and, and feels right. Yeah. And, uh, and in terms of the vehicles as well, there's been some questions about that. And I, and I think you, you said yourself in other places, but maybe it hasn't always been picked up about, they're not, they're not quite finished yet. You're not 100% kind of right there yet. No, and this touches uh, back on what, what Ronnie said. You know, this yeah. is this is a, a in progress. You know, this is this is a live Kickstarter. We're, we're designing as we go. So yeah, those uh, nothing's finished. So there, there will be some adjustments in uh, uh, when we get to tooling and production and things like that. And scales may increase, yeah. details I, I, may I, increase. I, mean, I think the principle that you said to me is that we're going to keep making them as big as they can be while feeling right. Yes. And we always cheat with scale. You know, we all know if you look at. Any 28 mil vehicle, you think, well, are they really fitting in there? You know, and if that was a rage, your gun could only fire us. And I think what we're doing is we're going, making sure that the pieces feel a great game experience. Yeah. They feel intuitive. Certain ones are almost too big, some are too small. Yeah. Not a run basis, and I think you should talk about that because I think that's a big point. They changes your perspective between them two vehicles. But Matt's just going to keep doing it, using as much as we can on the sprue to make them as big as we can, but actually making it feel awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you want to touch on the bases, Mark? Yeah. So um, obviously, you know, there's been a bit of debate about vehicles, bases, no bases. Um, we we looked at it, Alessio and I, and we said, actually, well, let's write the rules for no bases because then people can choose. You know, it, it is quite uh, quite divisive. Some people say I have to have bases. <laughs> Other people say absolutely not. Um, if you so, write it that you don't need bases, you can play it both ways. Exactly. But if you write it with bases, you can only play it with bases. Yeah. So we've written it with no bases. You're obviously free to put them on. But I think that, that may be some of the perception as well when we're look, looking at the photos that we've yeah. got. So the infantry are all on bases. They're quite well spa spaced out because their squads are moving around in a sci-fi game. Yeah. Um, and the vehicles aren't. So, you know, some of the vehicles are going to be lower because they're sitting straight on and not on bases. And the, the, that base makes the infantry feel bigger as well. So yeah. I think, you know, we'll show some pictures of uh, some vehicles on, on bases and it may change perception. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, 
building on from bases or, or building, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we're going to do a little bit about the uh, the terrain as well. Um, you get a whole load of stuff inside the in the terrain pledge, but um, there's been a few questions about how much do you get? Is it enough for a game? Do I need to buy two? Or do you want to touch on that one? Uh, yep. So we've, it's a, a, a range that we've been working on with uh, with one of our sculptors, um, and we've also added um, some you know, Warpath Universe specific uh, terrain in there as well. Um, but the whole the, the whole um, you know we've used that terrain system to build the game. The game's based around that, um, and what you get in the uh, certainly if you look at that that XL set, you know yeah. there's, a, there's a whole load of buildings and, and you know, different sizes you can build. About a hundred quid that isn't it? And I think yeah. hundred quid. We've got a picture coming up. Yeah. But that is your gaming table done. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that gives you loads and loads of road, landing pads, you know, eight, ten buildings, whatever size you want. You know, that that's enough for once you've added in some, your woods and your hills. Yeah. That's a whole gaming table right there. And also the modularity of it allows you to craft it however you want it as well. It's not it's not fixed out of the box. Absolutely. You can, you can yeah, it's it, it's your Lego, isn't it? Yeah. The, like, 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 our, like our Dead Zone stuff. And, and, you know, some of those pictures we've seen on the Kickstarter use a lot of our existing Dead Zone stuff, the bits from there as well, and it kit bashes together brilliantly. Yeah. I'm not going to say that I've, painted all the scenery that you're looking at <laughs> if even i can paint it uh, it's lovely i mean ben built it i, I painted some up it's gorgeous stuff it's very solid you whack it down and, and for 100 quid like i say other than your trees and your hills mm. you've got your war games table yeah. done um yeah we've got some strongly thematic but drawing on a base easy to glue together done and then I guess building on that as well, another question that's cropped up has been around about the, the, the four main factions. We're now up to five now, of course, uh, with more to be unlocked. Um, but just to kind of give people a little bit of a flavour about how those particular factions play. So let's start with the Enforcers. Eh? What can you tell us about the Enforcers? Yeah, I mean, I think the key words are ruthless, surgical and unforgiving, which is great. And, you know, we all know they're super armoured troops. But what does it mean? Well, I mean, there's... The, if you're looking at the army as, as a whole, I think the the key thing around the enforcers is really their the mobility. Yeah. You know, so a lot of the uh, you know, the lot of the army has got anti grav, which means they don't really care much about terrain or up to a particular height anyway, or other enemy units. They'll just go over. They'll go where they want to go. Um, so they can't <laughs> <Good> stop <laughs> them. <laughs> exactly. Um, so they're highly mobile in that in, in that regard. You know, the the enforcers will get to where they want to go quickly. Um, and then the enemy will pay dearly for them taking, <laughs> taking it off of them. I think one of their, their most powerful strategic orders, um, and these are the things which give... I was going to say, a strategic yeah. order is the thing that doubles down on what they do. Yeah, it's, it's the army flavour. So every, every army's got these strategic orders, which is kind of their theme. Um, their most powerful one is called Go, Go, Go. Um, that allows them to, any unit, to sprint... Um, and then still be able to shoot afterwards. Yeah. Normally, if you sprint, you can't. Course, um, yeah. So, you know, they, they can get around and, and put the firepower down when they want it. Yeah, I think that, I think with each army, there's... there's It's the combination as well. So they're super mobile, yep. but then they've got these super long-range command, high tactician values. Yeah. So not only getting there, you can't stop them. They can command the army yeah. at, all across the board. And I think those command ranges are a, are a big factor in armies. Yeah, absolutely. So if you, if you haven't got that coverage, you can't execute those tactical and strategic orders. So, you know, you're, you're limiting your, your, your ability there. Um, and that extended range also helps them uh, in the end phase, clearing pin markers and stuff as well. So, and they've got a, they've got a, and they've got a good nerve too. So they're, you know, they're, they're, they're hard to, hard to pin down. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's that all round balance with them. Yeah. And then the enforcers have all round balance, but particular super quick movement, solid shooting units that do each type of thing quite well. You know, there's speed and guns, these are um, assaulting and yeah. no, not brilliant at anything, but solid at all of it. Yep. And as long as you use your units right, you're going to make a mess of anyone you're coming up against. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then can I talk about the... Uh, well, the, the yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> because, because the thing that I think adds a whole other level to the game are these super heavies. Yeah. And we put them up there and these are the things that just double personifies each army and the Dracon Cruiser... I forget all the rules, but I mean, they get orbital deployment, yep. which means which means they can uh, they can basically go into reserve and then they can just land anywhere that, where they want on the table. I mean, they might scatter a bit, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but, but 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 this guy's got um, an ability to reduce that amount of scatter. So you, you're pretty you're pretty sure where yeah. you're going to land. So totally owns that kind of like when we say they want to go there, that's where they're going. Good yeah. luck yeah. stopping them. There's massive cruisers coming out of the sky as they're coming down. They're firing their burst lasers. Yep, two banks of burst lasers. Two yep. banks of burst lasers were like that. Um, they're going to uh, add some command dice just so they can really can do exactly what. They 
they want to your command pool. Yep. yep. And to finish it off, um, they're just going to dump a load of troops right into the middle of one of the strategic points uh, where they land. Yeah, norm normally a unit can only carry one other unit. Uh, yeah. The Dracon can carry two units. They could be all assault troops, and it's an assault ship. So anyone, if any units are disembarking from it and attacking, get a bonus to attack when they when they disembark. As opposed to you would normally get a bit, a bit of a negative. Yes. You? So yes. yeah. So it's a double, so double quite win. nasty. Yes. So <laughs> if, if that's not ruthless, surgical, and unforgiving, I don't know what it is. Because <laughs> orbital deployment, burst lasers, command dice, and straight into assault. Oh yes. So that sounds like the enforcers might be uh, might be want to choose. Yeah, well, you don't see the yeah. Forge Files, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, I think we should touch on the plague, who are horrifying, infectious, and monstrous. So what can you tell us about those? Well, those are the describing words, but the, the starting point for the plague is this is you've got zombie, ghoul, mule, wall of bodies coming at you. You know, they're just kind of rolling across the battlefields, flash you're fighting them, rolling and more are coming along. They've nicked everyone else's equipment and it's all been taken over. Um, and and what you see first is just a big wall of, of sacrificial um, bodies that, are, yeah. that you're going to have to shoot your way through. You yeah. know, that scene in the movie where as fast as you're shooting them. <laughs> but they're a bit cleverer than that, aren't they? That's right. So, you know, you're, you want to get that wall as far across as possible or even into the enemy if you can. So they, they've got some tricks up their sleeves to do that. Obviously, they've got the, so they can suppress the enemy with their artillery support, which we've given them for, yeah. in, in Warpath. So they've got that. They can fire those barrages it's a bit over. Damage. It's not exact, but no, boy, oh boy, it can... <laughs> it's all yeah, and, it can it's all... Yeah, and, and even if it doesn't damage, it can pin, which, yeah. can, you know, it can, it, 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 it can hurt you in that way. Yeah. Um, but... This is one one of the, if we're looking at strategic orders again, this is the, the one that infection yeah. really plays into this because the, the commanders can then infect those units as they're traveling across and, uh, and it gives them um, gives them a six plus save. So all of those units that are being shot at, shot at, shot at, yeah. can all just shrug it off and say, no, 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 no <laughs> we're we we yeah, we 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 <laughs> we going to get to you. Um, but uh, yeah, and then of course, then if, if they do hit you, they, they mess you up. But otherwise, you know, there's there's some there's some more interesting things uh, <laughs> just sitting behind those two. Yeah. So the, the what you would describe as your classic horde kind of monster army. But I think wave one is horde. The first part, the starter, yeah. is yeah. the horde. Yeah. yeah. And then comes the main course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what what you've got sitting behind that? Once you you know what that, that wall is protecting really is what where you really want to, the plague to get in, and that's where the monsters hit. Yeah. So this is where your things like your your leapers, your bursters, the plague lord itself, if you've, you've taken that as a command, and certainly the aberration units. You know yeah. the, these are the real monsters. Those are the things that are going to get in and make a, a, a just a real bloody mess. <laughs> for, piercing, <laughs> super loads of attack, frenzy. You know all, all, all yeah. of that good stuff. And you know and your your other strategic orders. Then that's when you, those come into play once you're in combat. You've got uh, Aura of Terror, which again, as, as units charging in, they'll pin enemy units down. Yeah. Um, and they've got thirst, thirst for Blood, which is really nasty because that, you know, a plague unit using that will reroll all success, unsuccessful rolls to hit in yeah. combat. So, you know, that, it's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that combo. You're yeah. going to disrupt you and mess you up, get them across, wow. Yeah. Mm. And then, <laughs> and then you get your super heavy. <laughs> So help me with exactly the rules, but I'm fairly sure your super heavy is an absolute beast of a beast of a beast in combat. Uh, oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. It tears down buildings. Yep. So one of the whole points with the strategic game is you're, like, you're in a building, and you're quite hard to shift unless a Colossus comes up and it just tears it apart. Yeah. So, I mean, how cool is that? Yep. While it's chucking up corrosive vomit all over you. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's got, it's got a dodgy tummy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Armour piercing, corrosive vomit. Thank you very much. And not only that, because it's one of the things that's one of the weaknesses you've got to compensate for in the uh, plague army is the weaker nerve. Yep. They haven't got that command and control, but anything anywhere close to the Colossus gets an unflinching aura. So it's going nowhere and it stays. The nerve's boosted right up. It's like tearing in there on the back of it. And suddenly you've got this mm. absolute Colossus. Mm -hmm. There, I'll say that. And the core of the army. Uh, yeah, and it, it's terrifying itself. The, the, the size of it is just, it's just this massive, insane yeah. monster. Uh, anything within 12 inches of it itself, any enemy units are also having to re-roll successful nerve tests yeah. just from just from fear. And that's going to affect them, not just in the end phase when they're trying to clear their pin markers and things, but it, uh, nerve tests are, you can be overwhelmed in combat if you fail your nerve tests. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's dangerous. <laughs> so they sound like a lot of fun. Maybe not one if you're a vegetarian, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely, uh, definitely very- Fun, 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 fun army. Definitely yeah. a very different army from the others. And uh, yeah, like you say, a fun one to play. 
So next up, we're going to chat about the Asterians, the ancient secret of alien race. So gentlemen, what can you tell me about them? On the first pass of the uh, Asterians, it looks kind of like a very traditional army. Yep. You've got your marionettes. Now the marionettes are actually, you know, robots because Asterians are too valuable to deploy in big numbers. Yep. So the Asterian is up in the ship up in off-world grav, and they're remotely connected to the marionette, and that runs into the battlefield, which I think is very cool and yeah. good fun. So you've got your, your troops aren't even troops, they're robots. Then you've got your, your sky raisers, your black talons, your ciphers. This is the next level up. They're very good at doing a specific thing. Yeah. These, these add the speed, they add the glamour. Matt Sedan, cool sumo warrior, Japanese ninja lizards. <laughs> uh, Kalishi, Asterians who want the buzz of an actual combat, so come down in almost, you know, yeah. on any clothing and a razor to get in there. Tanks. They're your tactical punch. But the whole thing on the first level is each thing does one thing well. Yeah. But the skill of the general is to make sure that your mats are down, are going in and battling to take out objectives and clear out space. The Kalishi super quick. Yeah. Each bit... The speed, there's glamour, there's punch, but you've got to be quite surgical, you've got to be quite clever with how you use it. Yeah. But. <laughs> so, and this is where the uh, the alien tech, you know, that that yeah. that, 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 that enigmatic stuff that, uh, that that they is kind of the aura around them. So their uh, some of their abilities are things like energize. So, you know, they, they're using this to predict enemy actions. Uh, this is what we're trying to represent here. So, <laughs> you know, those command, con command <laughs> counters. Yeah. 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 So, you know, you can, so a lot, a lot of you guys are going to have saves from the alien tech. Uh, they can energize those saves. So if, if they look at it and think, I'm going to get shot here, yeah. and that looks like that's going to be a bucket load of dice, energize your shields, inc improve your save values. Nice. Um, now it's a bit of a gamble. They might miss completely, but, <laughs> but there you go. Um, and one of the other really cool things they've got is uh, is vibro shield. So any 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 unit can do that. So if again if they're looking at something, I'm going to get charged here. Activate your vibro shield. The the enemy unit might then suddenly not be able to charge you at all. You might be suddenly out of range. In which yeah. case they're kind of milling around, <laughs> and the rest of your army goes, "Great, what a nice juicy target!" <laughs> Brilliant, really close. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and that's that alien bit, which was which I think had a whole load of fun to write. And you know you to get yeah. balanced, but the the command counters give you a guess what's coming, and then they can respond to that yeah and it doesn't always work but when it does work oh my lord <laughs> does the fun follow yeah and then the overseer almost double the overseer and the super heavy double down on this yeah absolutely so kind of so on the so as well as predicting you know you can also uh, uh, adapt to what to what's going on so the overseer has got a cunning keyword which uh, um, allows him to change the action token on on a on a, on a nearby unit nice. um and the and the big kind of the the, the mech yeah. um which is the ADIS Clade Warden, um, can pretty much do what they want. So they, they can actually spend command points yeah. um, to once to change whatever the action they are. So, you know, I put them on sprint. Actually, that's not what the battlefield's doing. I'm going to spend those two command points. Right, I'm going on Overwatch or I'm yeah. doing, you know, w whatever I want. Um, and it can also, once it's in combat and, and finished the combat, it can then, it, uh, once it can break away and then it can still fire its gun as well. So, you know, it can, it can, it's basically, it's, it's got all the tools it, 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 it needs. It does everything, yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't do anything, but yeah. But whatever, whatever's the scenario, it just adapts to it. Yeah. And I think what, you know, I'm not going to be too nice to Leslie and Matt, because no one wants to that. But this is the army that's so sophisticated, so clever, the yeah. way they've teased in this kind of alien, like, anticipating and changing, but in a really clear way, clean yeah, way, you yeah. know, not argumentative, like there's your cans, we're going to respond by using the command points and adding that flavor. Yeah. And, and it's just a very sophisticated, very classy kind of yeah. Uh, army. Yeah, it definitely but, sounds like anyway. Yeah, definitely like not what the next one we're going to talk about because they're just stubborn <laughs> grumpy on. <laughs> so if you're feeling a bit more sophisticated and a little bit more uh, a bit more uppity I suppose, then you yeah. find why. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you like the finer things in life, maybe the Asterians are for you. So if you prefer your fine wine in a pint glass uh, with, a, <laughs> with a taste of ale, then maybe the Forge Fathers are the army for you. So, Ronnie, I know you, I know you want to tell us about the, uh, well, the small fellas. The yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 again, the first pass, what you've got is a very tough, solid, infantry heavy, packing a punch army. Yeah. You're going to have your basic steel warriors with armor piercing one right from the get go. Yeah. So you come close with anything, we're shooting at you, we're going through, we're going to knock you down. Um, 
and I think their strategic order, remind me on this, uh, this is for the Forge Star. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> which will Im improve their shooting, basically, um, which they love to do. Yeah. <laughs> they love their Hailstorm with their rifles and all to cannons and everything else. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's that bit about like, they don't have huge ranges of control, but where they are, they boy oh boy are they in control, and and primarily going to be, they want to shoot you, and they don't particularly want to get up close, and certainly they don't want to let the player get close. Yeah. And in order to do that, stubborn. Yeah, so they've got the the best nerve in the game. Yeah, you know, so obviously you know great at clearing, great at clearing things, and that reflects their um, you know from other games just the headstrong stubbornness yeah. of, of 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 the of the of the race. Um, but yeah, so the best nerve in the game. Um, so great at clearing, pinning. Uh, uh, one of the, the, the strategic orders helps them with that anyway. It also means that they're very hard to overwhelm again because yeah. we're, we're looking at nerve tests in, in combat. If you lose a combat, so they're not going to lose extra bases because of that. You know, they, they don't they care. They just stand there they and just, they just, they keep, fighting, they just yeah. keep fighting. Yeah. And they just keep fighting. They just keep fighting. They keep shooting. And it's kind of like a Zulu moment, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're there. Tanks. Uh, they do like their tanks, don't they? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's 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 the classic stern hammer, uh, yeah. of course, and the um, and the ones that people will know from firefight, the the halter half track, um, the iron ancestors, and things like that. But you know, they've we've we've sprinkled in a load of new ones as well because yeah. they, they like to make stuff. Yeah. You know, that's what they do. They forge things <laughs> in their in in their forge stars. Um, and these these other things are some quite nice surprises, I think. Yeah. yeah. No, we're unlocking some, and that's going to be great fun. And part of this army is leaning into that whole. This is where your choice of tanks are, and each yeah. one does something slightly different than the others. They're still tanks, but with a bit of flood, fun and flavor. And then just to add that little, the next level of, I think, strategic play to them, because essentially what they're doing is they're occupying space on the battlefield. You know where they are. You have to come and dig them out, and yeah. that's going to be hard work for you, and they're going to do everything to mess you up. But just, and I think it's very reflective of them, they then got the whole, the drop ship angle the the orbital deployment they are i don't know the best at it aren't they they've got mm. the most choices on that they can come in as infantry yeah so they've got drop drop ships which can drop any any type of infantry really but then they've got their hammer fist guys as well which can yeah. which can do it themselves you know yeah, they, they don't need drop ships so they just concentrate it <laughs> onto where they want which, which is jump out from orbit yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just jump it out of there away we go yeah. uh, which is very cool they've got some some fighters to give them some aer aerial protection and get yeah. some strafing runs in so that little touch of mobility there and certainly to more help out their chums when they're in trouble you know right there they are okay let's get some some support there yeah and then I'm, I'm not going to talk about the heavy this time i'm not going to talk about because i don't care you know i'm never playing for this so, uh, and i'll try i don't want to say the word <laughs> uh so the hrung near uh someone likes their uh their, their norse words uh the magma destroyer so yeah. this is this is a just a massive massive grinding tank um basically the magma cannon on it will basically destroy anything yeah. <laughs> that it points at um and, and it's got the big big shooter in the game isn't it that, that is the cannon oh, yeah. when it it's goes just, off it's just going to punch yeah. a hole in, in whatever yeah. you can get in line of sight too um and it's got it's backed up with with auto cannons as well which will again always always fire it's kind of relentless as it rolls on even on a sprint order it will fire those auto cannons yeah. in a, a infantry or whatever around it um and it's got a ridiculous uh, <laughs> ridiculous amount of armor it's a it's, yeah. it's 10 plus armor so you need to beat that on a on a d8 yeah Mm -hmm. for sure yeah. so you're going to need armor piercing to get through it and then it's still got five up save so you know it is very very hard to come down it's just slow and and I have had nothing to do with the play <laughs> testing on it you can obviously take that to the bank <laughs> <laughs> only, only Ronnie would put a 10 plus save on a DA <laughs> game so there we go you're definitely going to need that armor piercing so certainly from a flavor point of view if you like your heavy armor you like your tanks and you're feeling a bit stubborn maybe the Forge Fathers are for you so yeah, we're about halfway through the Kickstarter now. There's still a little bit of time left, so make sure that you get on and pledge. Um, if we've answered your questions today, then hopefully that's kind of put some of your, your fears to one side. If you've got any more questions, please do head over to the Kickstarter page and drop them in the comments there or drop them down in the uh, video here as well. And gents, is there anything else that you want to add? No, we've got a week left. Please come and join us. You can see it's kind of old school. We want to go as far as you, you want to take us. Um, I think we've got a beautiful slick game system. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, you'd say that. Then, yeah. wouldn't you? uh, gorgeous minis. It's going to be great fun to pop out and play, easy to paint. And it's that huge, big, big, big epic battles that, you know, I think I love. He loves. Yeah. My insanity turned into a reality by Matt and Alessio. So please come join us. We'll go as far as you guys want to go. See you. Thank you very much, gents. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew.